host Dorothea here in the studio. Um, we've got Maria behind the camera today, um, who's going to be walking around and hopefully giving you a better view of um, what we're doing with the paints and the finishes. So today we've got, um, we're going to be playing with French Navy, Vintrose French Navy chalk paint, Vintrose Morocco chalk paint, we've got the clear wax, the dark wax, some water. I've got some three, um, these three panels here which are all being varnished and I'm going to show you how to use the paints in three different ways um, with waxing in three different ways as well. So um, hopefully a very helpful video for those who are looking to paint this weekend. Um, so first and foremost, you have a new a fresh can of paint. Um, you want to open it up obviously. You want to remove these metal um, things. I still haven't found a name for them, but uh, to <laughs> stop um, the paints from leaking, any tempering, so you know that when you open up a fresh can, it's full of great color pigments. So you want to go in from the side with your can opener, open it up, and like you probably have already heard, it is a fully pigmented paint. This is a brand new French Navy. You can see the thickness of that. Um, and, you know, it's, it's lovely and thick. Um, it's full of color pigments. You want to grab your stirring stick and you want to give it a good stir. So you can see as I put it in there, how thick that is. And as you stir it, it almost kind of activates it. It needs, to, it needs a really, um, you know, thorough stir. And you can see it loosening up and becoming really creamy. So, there you go. It's getting looser and looser and becoming a lot more creamy. And that's kind of, that's the creamy texture that you want. Different colours will have um, slightly different characteristics when you first open the can. Um, and this is just due to it being a fully pigmented paint. It's a completely different experience when you're painting with a fully pigmented paint. Um, and once you kind of get the few little tricks and, and um, tips, it's incredible. Vintrose chalk paint has a really high coverage. It's got amazing coverage. Um, 19 square meters per tin. Some tested um, to show up to 24 square meters per tin. So there we are. And put that to the side, put that to one side. So working with a fully pigmented um, paint, or Vintro chalk paint, it's very, very versatile. Now, it has the ability to create beautiful, smooth finishes very effortlessly. You can create beautiful textured finishes with, um, you know, with lots of texture, so you can bring it out with your coloured waxes and create a really rustic look. Um, and you can do, you know, like a semi-textured, um, semi-smooth finish, um, what we call in here a flat finish. And um, so whatever you want to do, the, you know, this paint is capable of doing that. Now the first one I'm going to do is I'm just going to use it straight out of the can to show you how to do a textured finish. I'm going to use the Vintro Pure Bristle Brush. Now these are very, very light to hold in the hand. It's Beechwood Handle. Um, these are not fully loaded bristle brushes. So um, pure, bristle, pure bristles will draw moisture out of the paint. You can see that this paint doesn't have a lot of, um, it doesn't need a lot of moisture taken out of it. You know, these um, bristles also splay really beautifully, so it helps to kind of flatten out the paint um, if you're wanting a flatter finish, um, or you can drag it around a little bit for more of a textured finish. So I'm going to use this straight out of here. I've got about that much on my brush. And I'm gonna just grab one of these and I'm gonna run it along. And I'm brushing every which way on a very, very highly varnished um, mahogany. To create texture and that's straight out of the tin. 
And when you're painting with a fully pigmented paint or a highly pigmented paint, um, you know, you don't need to overwork it. You don't need to overbrush it. It just covers. So, <clears throat> you know, you're just gently kind of placing the paint on there. And you're getting coverage. You can see the coverage as you're painting with it. You know, and we have this tendency, I suppose, a natural tendency to kind of really work in the paint because we're, we're used to painting like that. But you don't need to with this. And you kind of, you know, see, I'm not putting a lot of pressure down, but I'm getting lots of beautiful brush marks, lots of beautiful texture, so that my coloured wax will sit in between that. There we go. And so I'll leave that to dry. Just leave that there. Um, and so the other thing that the other finish that you can do is a beautiful smooth finish and how that works is um, the paints are highly highly pigmented I know I keep going on about that but it's, it's just got this amazing coverage and so even when you water down the paint it still maintains a really really great coverage so I'm just going to decant some into this bowl kind of like baking and I probably don't need that much for that material and swatch so you can see here you can decant some in a bowl you know if you're watering it down for a smooth finish I recommend doing that because you know you want to keep um, the paint in its original condition so that it's, it becomes really versatile for different finishes for you if you're doing a smooth finish you put some in a um, decant some add a little bit of add a bit of water in there mix it in go over to um, our varnish mahogany and we're going to go over and I'm using um, a Vintro flat brush they're great for creating beautiful smooth finishes and you can see there even though I've added quite a bit of water to that, I'm achieving amazing coverage with a blue. not to hold it while I'm painting there we go <laughs> um, so there you go so that's a smooth finish <clears throat> now you may want something that's a little bit more in between so not overly textured um, just you know a little bit of texture but still quite flat um, what you'd want to do is you can pour some out and I know this one's got a bit of water in it already a couple of drops of water in there um, and then mix it around because I have a watered down paint in this bowl already that's probably enough and you want to use your pure bristle um, brush to paint with and you kind of just gently place it on you know kind of smooth but kind of a little bit you know, textured a little bit here and there. And then at the end, you might just kind of feather, feather it a little bit with a little bit of texture.
Doesn't need a lot of pressure. There we go. So what we'll do is we'll leave these to dry. Um, you can see even the first one that I've done here, you get, it's starting to dry already. So there's some drying spots there. Now the dry time for the paint is roughly 20 to 30 minutes. And of course that depends on how thick you place the paint as well. Um, if you're doing quite a smooth finish, um, it dries generally 20 to 30 minutes, um, depending on the condition. But we've found that in New Zealand, it dries really fast around that time frame. So we'll come back once the, uh, these swatches are dry and um, we'll talk about waxing. Hi guys, we're back. Um, it's probably been about 30 minutes um, and these are now dry. So you can see, um, you know, it dries in a beautiful kind of matte finish. Now, this one here has more or less got full coverage. Same with this one. I've just missed a couple of areas through here. The smooth, really good coverage. But there's just a couple of areas we can still see a little bit of the wood coming through. So I'm gonna do a second coat on that one. Um, and uh, so I'm going back to my bowl. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to it because it's kind of been in the air. I'll mix it up, just kind of rejuvenate it a little bit. I only need a very, very light coat on that um, because it's more or less full anyways. I'm just gonna water it down a little bit further. And you know, you kind of water it down and you think, oh, that's not gonna cover, but it's just unbelievable how even a watered down coat um, has amazing coverage. So. Just gonna leave it on the table this time because I keep getting finger marks on it when I hold it. <laughs> So that's my, so just a little bit there, that's my smooth finish, tickle it out, and we're just going to leave that to dry, and then um, I'm now going to show you some waxing. I think that's where we're heading. So let me just move this bowl out of the way. Um, so on the table, I have the clear wax and the dark wax. Now on this textured piece here, I'm gonna show you the dark wax. So um, I'm just gonna open up the dark wax. And I just wanna show you the consistency of the waxes. It's something that everyone's been really excited about. Um, it's very silky. It's not sticky. It's just silky and it's just so easy to brush on. Um, so I'm going to brush the dark wax over this piece here. Now you can choose to clear wax before you put your dark wax on if you like. But what we found in the studio here is that the waxes are so beautiful and so silky that we apply the dark wax straight on. Um, and we can work in quite big sections we've found as well because it's such a silky wax. Now, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up your um, dark wax and you're gonna apply it over your um, textured piece. So the dark wax or the um, is a brown wax, if you like, and it's great if you're wanting to create more of an antique type look um, or an aged finish. And I'm just gonna apply it. You can see it just kind of spreads. Very easy to brush on. You don't need a lot because it's so silky. Darkens it back up. You want to brush it kind of every which way too if you've got a bit of texture to get it into your texture. And then you're going to grab a clean lint-free rag. Now it's really important that it's lint-free so give it a shake to make sure there's no lint in it. And when you're removing wax or wiping wax away or detailing, 
always find it's nice to kind of fold your rag up nice and smooth so you're working on a nice smooth pad so you don't get wrinkles um, you know they're transferring the wrinkles from the rag onto your piece of furniture so then what you're gonna do is gonna start removing and what you'll find is that dark wax will just sit in between the texture bringing it out and this wax is so silky that it's so easy to create an even dark waxed look there's no stickiness to it it's just it really is a beautiful wax to work with so you can see it's stuck in between there and all the texture um, really bringing it out I know the French Navy is a darker color um, so it sits quite subtly on the uh, and quite beautifully now Although we've put the dark wax directly on um, Vintro chalk paint, we found that also, if you wanted to remove it, you can use the clear wax and go over it. So I'm just going to put a bit of clear wax on my finger just to show you. Um, I'm just going to go here. So you can see that's been removed. Um, you can remove the dark wax quite beautifully with a clear wax over the top so when you're dark waxing what you want to do is you want to do some um, you know if you if you choose to you can do some highlighting just by putting a bit of clear wax on you know on any raised edges where you want to lift it a little bit more to bring the color through there we are So you can see how that's brought the French Navy out a little bit more. So you got your French Navy and then your dark wax without any clear wax on top. You know, and often we use clear wax over the top just to even it out. But I do find that with this dark wax, because it's so silky, um, I'll put it in the light so you yeah. can see. Um, because it's so silky, you get such a beautiful even coverage, you know, um, when you're detailing with wax. So that's the brown wax. guys we're back um, so now we're going to get ready to do a clear wax on the smooth finish now before I clear wax it if you wanted a super super smooth finish you can give it a light sand um, before you wax so I've just got some really fine sandpaper here I think this one here is 600 grit and you just grab um, and you can just slightly sand and what that will do is it will scuff the chalk paint a little bit it will sand any brush strokes any fine brush strokes off the rest is quite smooth so I'm just showing you on there um, and then don't worry about the dust in that because when you go to clear wax that will all go away now I'm going to open up the clear wax and again the clear wax is a beautiful silky silky um, wax it is really beautiful to work with really easy to work with it helps I think it helps to minimize anything like tackiness streaks because um, it's so easy to apply and because it's such a um, silky wax we just use the pure bristle brush the same one that we use to paint um, and you more or less just lightly paint it on so I'm going to just grab a little bit of this and just apply it on so easy to use so silky and you really don't need a lot you can work in um, you know quite a big section really push it on And then grab your clean, lint-free rag and give it a wipe. Taking the excess off. Beautiful. We'll just let that sit there. 
And while that's sitting there, you can see that's a really beautiful, smooth finish. It's starting to dry and lift a little bit. Um, and we're going to move on to our coloured wax. Yeah. <clears throat> I've just got some baking paper here. When you're doing a coloured wax, you want to decant. So you don't want to turn your entire wax unless you're working on something really, really big. So just a little bit of wax there. And I'm gonna use Morocco today. Um, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little bit of that, put it into my wax. That was probably a bit too much actually, but the more intense you want the color, the more paint you'll put in there. But because it's such a um, highly pigmented paint and such a silky wax, they work together really beautifully for a colored wax. It almost looks good enough to eat. Um, and what you want to do is you want to mix it, but you want it to still be waxy. You know, um, it doesn't need a lot of paint in there um, to tint it. Coloured waxes are really beautiful because, um, you know, sometimes, I mean, it just really opens up the doors for all the different finishes. You don't, you, sometimes you don't want a French antique look or you just want to add a bit of depth to the colour so you can use Cloudburst which is a grey with one of the neutrals um, like Champagne Malts, um, one of the off-whites and it creates a beautiful um, depth to the colour. So when you're using your coloured wax you want to work in a big section. Um, the more air time it has the more the colour will kind of grab, grab hold in between the texture. If you want it to be a little bit more intense you can even do two thin coats of your coloured wax. Um, but you know, otherwise just kind of brush it on in big sections and just let it kind of sit a bit. So you spread it out nice and thin. We'll just spread it right out like that. Using your brush, you're kind of almost pa painting with your colored wax. And if you've got some texture in there, um, it will grab hold in between the texture. I'm just going to grab a rag. And the more air time you give it, like I said, the more um, that colour will grab. Uh, so, you know, when you're doing a tabletop, you may want to brush it over the entire tabletop um, before you come back and rag it. And when you're ragging, um, it's not a firm wipe. You want to just lightly feather that um, wax, so almost like flattening it. Lightly, or um, another word to use that, that might give you a better idea is um, dusting it with a rag. And again, fold your rag up so it's nice and smooth. I'm just going to do that with mine. And then you're just going to lightly... backwards and forwards, just drawing it on there. I'm putting almost no pressure on there. The longer you leave it on, the easier kind of it is to kind of flatten out. Um, but that's our kind of semi-textured piece. It's not too textured. It's a little bit of texture on there just to give it a little bit of depth when we put our coloured wax on. Um, you may leave the wax, the coloured wax stronger in all the bevels and you might wipe this kind of clean, kind of backwards and forwards, kind of flattening that out. If you wipe firmly, you'll get the original colour through more. So kind of like that. And you can see that blue coming out a little bit more. That's a firm wipe. So um, otherwise, just a light dusting with your rag over it. I'm just going to pop some back over this because I do want a light dusting. But... So that's a really subtle Morocco wax. Now, <clears throat> as an alternative, I'm going to um, put some more Morocco in my wax. I'm going to make a stronger wax, just to show you. 
how intense you, you can get. Now, if you were to pop more paint in your wax, you want to work in probably smaller sections because it does dry out a lot faster. So I'm brushing it out. I'll just do half so you can see. And just give it a little bit of time. Then grab your rag. And dusting it off. So that's a stronger ratio of paint um, versus wax. And kind of lightly dust it off backwards and forwards. That flattening out the wax and almost like helping it to dry on there. And you can see that's a little bit more intense. So that's it guys. So you know one litre of Vintra chalk paint can create a variety of different finishes. Um, you can adjust the consistency um, with just a little bit of water, whether you want to water it right down for a beautiful smooth finish. Remember with a smooth finish, um, you want to water the paint down so when you paint on, you paint with little to no texture using a flat synthetic brush. Uh, um, if you water it right down, you'll get little to no brush strokes and you might not even need to sand. Um, and then you want to finish it off with a clear wax or even a lacquer. Um, for texture, you want to use it, you can use it straight out of the can. It has amazing coverage when you use it straight out of the can. You can use it with your pure bristle brush to help create that texture. Dark wax was placed over um, our textured one today. Um, and the dark wax was placed without any clear wax. And you, as you saw in the um, video earlier, you can still remove it with a bit of clear wax over the top. Um, for a colored wax, and that's, you know, really exciting. Um, fully pigmented paint works really well with a silky, um, buttery kind of wax. You can color your waxes in any color you like, whether it be black, purple, red, pink, whatever. Um, and you can use your pure bristle brush to apply that on. Um, and dust it off. So not a firm white, but more of a dusting. And if you want a mid texture, uh, remember, just water it down just a little bit, and then just kind of almost tickle the paint on there and you'll see the amazing coverage. Um, so lots of different ways to use it. Um, have fun with it, it's a creative paint. Um, and you know, be creative and, and create something that's perfect for you. Have fun.